Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and today I'm going to review it for you guys. Simply put, this is the most insanely feature-packed vehicle I have ever reviewed on this channel. Now you might be saying, that's cool and all, Isaac, but did you say that Jeep is $105,000? Yes, it is, but hear me out, it's got night vision. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Brown Dob Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for allowing me to review this vehicle. For all your Stellantis vehicle needs, you can visit Brown Dob at their website, browndob.net. Starting out on the front of this new Grand Wagoneer with the typography at the top, and then we'll move our way down. So obviously it says Wagoneer up here at the front, and then moving down to the seven slot grille, it says America in really, really tiny font in the center of the seven slot. You know it's American made because even the truck says America. Below that, it has a camera for the 360 degree camera system with a little tiny washer for that camera in case it gets dirty. That's really cool to see. Then below that, you'll have parking sensors. And this is a sensor right here uh, for the forward collision warning. And then to the side of the parking sensors, there is a night vision sensor right here, as I mentioned up top. And I'll talk about the night vision a little bit more when we move to the interior. Below that, you'll have tow hooks. Always good to see tow hooks. Hmm, that would have also been nice to see on the new Tundra. Interesting that even this SUV has that. Uh, and then lastly, I want to touch upon the headlights. Um, of course, you'll have full LED headlights daytime running lights and fog lights, especially at this price, I would hope so. One of the cool things that it does is when you get close to the Grand Wagoneer, you hit unlock, the headlights kind of do this little dance. They turn on, they go doot, 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 and then they, they fade up, which is really nice. And then when you're locking the Grand Wagoneer, they do the same thing. They kind of slowly turn themselves off. That's a really nice attention to detail as well. Moving underneath the hood in the Grand Wagoneer, Jeep was not messing around. This is powered by a 6.4 liter Hemi V8, making 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. I'm really happy to see that Jeep took the initiative to put the larger engine in this because they easily could have just put the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 inside like they did with the regular Wagoneer. And that's not a bad engine, but something this luxurious and bulky really deserves that engine upgrade. Now this Jeep does not compete with its regular contenders like Chevy and Ford. Rather, Jeep is targeting the Cadillac Escalade Lincoln Navigator market with this particular one. And that's abundantly clear when I just walk up to the side of this Jeep and it senses that I'm here. And of course, it's not doing it now. When I just walk up to this Jeep and you can see the running boards and the mirrors fold out because they sense that I have the key in my pocket. That's really cool. And the hits don't stop coming on the profile, especially with the mirrors. They're heated, they'll have blind spot monitoring, their power. They come with a smaller blind spot mirror, so blind spot monitoring wasn't enough. They also come with that. They're also um, equipped with turn signal indicators, a camera for the 360 degree camera system, and puddle lights, which is insane. Also, it says Jeep right there. That's not really a feature, but it does say that. Moving down here, you're gonna have your Grand Wagoneer logo with the American flag. That's really cool. And you're gonna get these really, really nice 285, 45R tires around these massive 22-inch Wagoneer wheels. Moving to the rear of the Grand Wagoneer, you're gonna get parking sensors down here, and then you can remove this to access your tow hitch if you want. This is pretty well equipped to tow if you'd like to do that. And then moving a little bit further up, you'll have your backup camera right here. You'll have another camera out the rear, and uh, both of these, which I think is really cool, is they have these little sprayers, so if they get dirty, um, you can spray water onto them to uh, uh, clean those up. That's not something that we see on a lot of vehicles with their backup cameras, um, so it's really nice that they have that feature included. And then if I take out the key fob really quick, in addition to lock, unlock, remote start, you also have the ability to tap the button to open up the lift gate. Now, obviously I got some rubber floor mats back here, um, but if you fold all these seats down, which there are buttons for right here, you actually have 94.2 cubic feet 
of, uh, of storage space. Sorry, there's a ton of construction going on right next to me. I, for some reason, I just keep winding up reviewing these vehicles in construction zones. I have no idea why. Um, but anyway, like I said, you can fold the second row seats down. There's a button here to drop the tailgate um, if you'd want from inside here. And uh, there's some nice storage and cargo capacity here. I'm sure I'm cutting to footage of that right now. Oh, this one doesn't want to go down for some reason. Oh, look, they do a little dance. Do, do, do. Whoops. You just tap them. I thought you had to hold them. I really should like practice this before I film footage of it, right? Interestingly, the third row will fold up and down from these buttons, but the second row only folds down. You can also tap the key fob to lower the lift gate if you'd like to do that as well. The last thing I'd like to touch upon on the exterior of the Grand Wagoneer is the air suspension that this comes equipped with. So from the key fob, you can actually lower the suspension so it's easier to get in. Now I've actually just raised it from the inside to its highest uh, length and right now after I hit the button it is really slowly lowering the Grand Wagoneer. As you can see if you kind of watch this wheel well here it's really it's lowering it um, so it's easier to get in. Uh, now the running boards already make it pretty easy to get in but they just went one step further with the air suspension in this. I've also covered uh, a Ram 1500 Limited that has this ability as well. Just one of the coolest features in the car industry is you can access it right from your key fob. And then now the running board's deploying and we can get inside. Moving to the interior of the Grand Wagoneer. It is incredible in here, starting with the door panel. This is soft touch leather right here. You'll have your grab handle, this really, really nice wood. And then you do have your adjustments for the seats. What's crazy is, in addition to obviously lumbar support and stuff, there's also thigh support. So it actually moves up and down with that. That is crazy. So cool to have that uh, functionality there. And then moving a little bit lower, you'll have lock, unlock, all four power windows. So they're all one touch. And then you'll have your mirror controls. And then if you spin this around, you can actually fold that in and the mirrors will fold in. So that's really cool. Um, and then look at the incredible quality, uh, even on these climate vents. I mean, they are just so premium. Moving to the steering wheel right here, it is full leather with some wood right here and the stitching is just amazing. It's, it's bar none. Um, now you have your Bluetooth controls here and then the controls for the screen in the center, which we'll get to in a minute. You'll have your cruise control uh, and radar guided cruise control settings right here. One thing um, I don't love on this interior is the windshield wiper stocks and the turn signals are pretty standard, nothing special with them. And to do the uh, volume and the channel changing, uh, that's still the standard Fiat Chrysler buttons on the back here. Um, no changes. So that is a little disappointing, but I do kind of understand uh, the part recycling. Now, if we move into the center screen here, obviously uh, this has everything that you'd need. It's a fully digital gauge cluster. Uh, so tax, speedometer, um, you have your music on there, you have your messages, um, and then we get to the night vision. So as you can see, there is a Ram 1500 in front of me. This also has a heads up display. You can see that zero that's flashing. It's not actually flashing. The refresh rate of the camera is too high for the refresh rate of the LED there, so it looks like it's blinking, but it is not. We'll get to that in a second. Back to the night vision. This is really cool, so you can see out in front of you if there's you know, like animals or pedestrians and stuff that you might not be able to catch with your regular headlights. You have the ability to leave that up in the gauge cluster here, and it's just like so amazing. I do, I've never reviewed a vehicle before with night vision, so I gotta give them that. Um, that is really awesome. And then, you know, on this uh, heads up display, that's also an additional really nice feature because you can see what your speed is when you're driving. Another insane feature is that the heads up display also knows the speed limit of the road you're on. You have this really just premium looking start stop uh, button that has like leather on it. I mean, that is like incredible. Um, and then you'll have your trailer braking assist down here. Another complaint that I have to levy is the, the finish looks incredible, but it is kind of flimsy. You know, um, 
it's 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 that Jeep stuff. I mean, it looks really premium. A lot of this interior is really solid feeling, uh, especially these screens. But I just noticed this hitting the start stop thing that this shook a little bit. And I was like, wow, this, this is the thing that I feel like people are gonna be touching quite often. And to have that be so flimsy already, um, it, it just doesn't, it's not a good look. Um, the rest of this interior though, is very premium with a ton of premium features that work really well. Um, but I want to be honest, I want to be straightforward that that was something that I noticed. Um, continuing on moving to this gigantic screen right here. Um, so I'm currently on the uh, massaging seats because of course this has massaging seats, but I'm going to go here. Um, you'll have navigation built in, of course, Sirius XM. It has all the Wi-Fi capabilities that you need on this screen. So Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can pull all of that up. Um, you can go specifically to navigation. You can go uh, to phone pairing, vehicle settings, stuff like that. Um, we'll get to the passenger screen in a minute. Um, I don't know why this screen is, is showing up as red because it is not red on uh, my thing. But anyway, that must just, again, be an LED thing with the refresh rate. Moving over here, um, you are gonna get, whoop, let's focus up, uh, your buttons for your heated seats and your heated steering wheel, though those are also in the comfort settings on this screen. So that is nice to have the availability to either do a physical, or it's not a physical button, it's kind of a touch sensitive button, but you don't have to dig through a menu if you just wanna turn your heated seats on quickly. Below that are your climate uh, controls, but you can also control them from this screen down here. And um, man, these massaging seats are really, really nice. Like very, very premium feeling. And now you might be saying, well, Isaac, that's all cool that you have this screen and down here, but I I'd just like to charge my phone. Where, where is the USB here? W where's the USBs? I'm glad you asked. If you hit this button right down there, that screen will turn off and fold up to reveal USBs, some storage uh, with a wireless charger down here and an HDMI slot for the passenger side screen so you can watch movies and stuff over there. From here, you can't actually see the passenger screen is on. Uh, that prevents distraction, so like the visibility is cut down. So that's really just incredible. Um, you have a 12 volt power outlet, but that like is like meaningless with all the features here. It's like, wow, that's like, who cares? <laughs> um, but you know, that is an option there. And then we can fold the screen back down and then you'll have, you know, traction control buttons, um, parking sensor buttons, your hazards, stuff like that. And then your button to turn on the passenger screen and turn it off if you want. And then right here, you'll have your drive mode selector. So right now it's in auto, uh, but there's sport, rock, mud, sand, and snow and you can just switch between that by doing that and it's going to give you a little picture in the gauge cluster of what mode you're in and then this has a uh, circular shifter so all you have to do is spin this and that will take you from each mode and there's a really good solid click every time that you switch between each gear throwing it in reverse really quick uh, you'll have this 360 degree camera system um, with parking sensors, of course, and uh, the ability to move the lines, which is so helpful. Um, really, really nice. And you have the ability to just go in between different views, zoom in, which is really cool. Um, just a lot of options here um, for safety, which is super important um, and very nice to see that Jeep did not skimp on in the creation of this. Um, so, you can actually also leave those on if you're in drive, which is another neat feature. Down here, um, you have the button to raise your suspension. As you can see, I just popped this up and it's gonna raise the suspension automatically, which is very, very nice. Uh, very slowly it will um, give us a little bit more of a commanding view out the front. And then uh, you have a button for your uh, select speed um, this is like an off-roading mode, uh, like a kind of a hill descent control, essentially, for off-roading. And then if we tap this right here, you'll have some cup holders. And then, of course, you have a gigantic uh, storage space right here, which is also a cooler. So if you want to throw some drinks in there uh, or some sandwiches, um, it's basically a refrigerator that you can use, which is amazing. And then right above that, um, you have some more chargers. I have my chargers in here right now for all my equipment, uh, but USB and USB-C. But, oh my goodness, just 
so incredibly premium over here. Um, I'm just wildly impressed with, with the functionality in this Wagoneer. Um, we go up to the mirror. This mirror is uh, a camera as well that's in the back and you can switch it to just a regular mirror as you can see. But if you have a lot of people in the back that might obstruct your view, this mirror is also a camera. And then you have your controls for the panoramic sun slash moon roof, whatever it is uh, here, which is always really nice to see. And then you have your buttons uh, for your dome lights, your emergency assist, and if you want to uh, open the lift gate from back here, you can do that. I think that's everything over on the driver's side. Welcome to the passenger side screen. So as you can see, as I turn the camera here, as I mentioned, the driver can't actually see the screen, so it's not a distraction. That is incredible technology on its own, um, but it's really cool what you can do. You can control a couple of different things from here, um, and you can plug headphones in and like watch a movie on the screen so you can have your massaging seats here um, in your Grand Wagoneer while you watch a movie that is <laughs> insane. Um, you can obviously also go to FM, uh, AM, whatever you want to listen to and kind of control the radio from here, you can do that. It is, it is bonkers to me that, you know, we live in a world now that you can, I can hit FM on here because I don't want to reach over to here to hit uh, FM, wherever that would be. I guess it's probably in media or whatever. You know, like, I could reach here, but it's like, ah, this is already closer. I can do that, which is uh, just insane, but amazing that they have the technology to even be able to incorporate a screen into the dash glove box area of a Jeep. But I think that's pretty much gonna wrap up the front here. There is a passenger side. Uh, and a driver's side grab handle, I forgot to mention that, fully wrapped in leather, so it does pass my driver's side grab handle check. Um, but man, let's, let's move to the back because there is a ton back there as well. Welcome to the second row seats in the Wagoneer where you're gonna not only get headrest monitors that literally have Fire TV built into them with HDMIs, I mean, you could play video games back here. You also get a climate control screen back here, uh, heated and cooled seats for your second row, which is just wild. You'll also get uh, USBs, USB-Cs, and a household outlet back here. Whoop, it's not focusing. Come on, focus. There you go. A household outlet and another 12 volt. So you will not um, lack any charging. I mean, it, it's crazy back here. You'll get these really premium looking climate vents that, that fit in very nicely. Um, and the interior finish and trim is just as nice back here as it is up front. They have not skimped on anything. You're also gonna get um, storage, which is really nice in there, cup holders, and then you can also lift this up for a massive cargo space as well. And then you get such a premium look out of this uh, uh, panoramic moonroof, that's what I wanted to say. Also, you're gonna get grab handles back here that are also trimmed in leather. When do you ever see that? That is wild. And uh, I did not mention this up front, there is a Macintosh audio system. It sounds fantastic. I cannot play the audio, unfortunately, for copyright issues, but trust me when I say this thing sounds amazing. There is speakers absolutely everywhere inside this thing. Let's hit the third row. Finally, moving to the third row of the Grand Wagoneer where you get your own individual sunroof back here. Honestly, I didn't even notice that this was here until I climbed into the third row. Really neat. And then you're going to have what's called the fam cam right here. So if you direct your attention to that main screen, you can see me waving here, there's my hand. So if you have a lot of kids in the car, you can actually turn that screen on and see what they're doing back here if they're misbehaving and stuff. So that makes it much easier to handle everybody without looking all the way back and trying to see and taking your eyes off the road for a longer period of time. Really cool technology, glad that Jeep has implemented that. And then looking here to the side, you'll have your own climate vents, USB and USB-C, and really nice leather armrests with cup holders and some storage back here. This also has the ability, this is so cool, you can uh, fold the seat back and forward so you have some recline back here, which is really nice. Not too often 
that you see that in a third row of any vehicle, so it's really nice to see back here. This thing truly is an excellent competitor with the Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator. I'm very, very impressed with all the technology that they've been able to pack. All righty, driving the $105,000 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. This is wild. Honestly, I haven't driven a $100,000 vehicle in a little while. I think the last vehicle I did that was over 100,000 was probably the McLaren 650S. Um, but it's, it's crazy. I think for the price tag, this is definitely worth it comparatively because the McLaren can only seat two people and it doesn't have night vision. So um, just, just if I had to compare the two. But this thing is really, really smooth. The air ride suspension helps with that quite a bit. Um, but opening it up a little bit here, you know, this thing hauls the 6.4, woohoo! The 6.4 really picks up quickly. There is not a lot of lag or delay here, and it corners really nice. I love the cornering on this. It doesn't feel big. You know, a lot of vehicles in this size range feel really big, but this doesn't. This manages to feel incredibly sporty and coming to a stop with the brakes here. Really, really nice brake response, especially for something this big. I think driving this, it just doesn't feel as large as it is. It just handles so floaty and lightweight that you don't notice how much you're carrying in the back here, which is a great thing. Jeep really knocked it out of the park with this. Despite some, well, shoddier uh, finish in the interior here, I'm actually really impressed with this overall. So that is going to conclude my review of this 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that would really, really help my channel out quite a bit. Also, I'm a Christian, so if you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the comment section below. I love to read them, and it's a great way for me to connect with you guys uh, and give back by being able to pray for you. So that's really awesome. And I like to do a weekly Bible verse. That's usually how I close my videos out. And this week's is Matthew 7, 3. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and you do not look at the log in your own eye? To give you a little bit of context, this is actually Jesus saying these words during his famous Sermon on the Mount that's comprised of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And this specific verse is talking about judging people. And a little earlier in this, it says, judge, judge not lest you be judged. And I believe that's like 7-1, something around there. And often we tend to judge other people, but we don't look retrospectively at ourselves and our own selfish behavior. And we sometimes, uh, or I would say all of the time, do similar things. And we think that we're better than people, um, but we forget we have that log in our own eye. You know, we also have many grievances and sins that we commit every day, but we only end up focusing on, on the other people in our lives and, and then judging them. And so this is a good reminder from Jesus himself to not focus on the speck in our brother or sister's eye uh, and focus on that log on our own and work on that to be more Christ-like in our spiritual journey to pursue Christ. So with that uh, context added in, I would really encourage you guys, if you'd like to know more, to go to the book of Matthew. You can go online. There's free Bibles uh, that you can access there, or there's the Bible app. And I would really encourage you guys to go look into that if you'd like to know more about that. So I will see you guys next time. Take care.